Hello, you gorgeous soul, and welcome back to another episode of the Blissfully Ambitious Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Nett, and I've got a really good manifestation story for you today. We are going to be talking about manifestation 101, some of the basic principles and ideas that you need to know, but I promise this episode is really going to help you. I'm going to start this episode by reminding you that I am having a big lucky girl sale this month. All of my eBooks, I will put the link in the show notes so you can just head on over to my website and grab whatever eBooks you need are all on sale for $7 and 77 cents. I also have a big sale going on on my jewelry website. You can go to loveashleyna.com and grab the crystals that you need to help you manifest. The crystals on sale this month are all of my green crystals. Malachite is one of my favorite. Malachite is really good for letting go for if you're experiencing heartbreak or heartache and you really are having a hard time letting go of someone or something, Malachite is for you. There's also green aventurine, another one I really, really love. And that is really like the money stone. It is always what has helped me in just growing my business and really sales and that kind of vibe. And I've seen it work for girlfriends of mine who have hair salons and, you know, have their own sort of service-based businesses or even online like product businesses. It's just a really good crystal to work with because it helps your heart be open And anything green is a heart chakra crystal, which we talked about in one of the previous episodes. So it's going to open your heart. It's going to allow you to get into the receiving mode because your heart will be open and free to give and to receive. Okay. One of the eBooks that I know you will love that is on sale right now for $7 and 77 cents, which is wildly cheap. And I did that on purpose is actually how to manifest with crystals. So it is placements in the home, how to work with crystals, where to put them in the home, different feng shui tips, and it's using crystals as a feng shui tool. I have a couple other workbooks in there and ebooks that are about using feng shui in your home that are really, really helpful for you. I have some inner work like goddess and highest version of yourself, queen energy workbooks too. They're all meant to support you really getting in alignment and getting into your highest self. So go check those ebooks out. So it's interesting because today's manifestation story actually starts with a little bit of feng shui. So One of the biggest places in the home, I've talked about this before in podcast episode, is the front door, is the entryway. And if you haven't, you know, really learned about the entryway, I actually have an ebook called 25 Ways, I think it's 25 Ways to Attract Money Through Your Front Door. Because the entryway in feng shui is the mouth of the home. It's where new opportunities come in, new energy comes in. It's it's the most powerful area of your home you can use to bring in new energy, to usher in change. One of the fa- one of the, my favorite things that I do at the first of every month is the cinnamon ritual. You go to your front door and you blow cinnamon into your front door. I also always clean my front door. I Windex the window of the front door. And another thing you could do is get a new welcome mat. You can look at your life, like your front door, as the life opener, right? So you go to your front door. When you open the door, you let fresh air air in and maybe sweep all the dirt out, clean up that door. You are basically clearing out your channel for receiving new opportunities in your life, okay? So one of the things that I have been looking for in my home is a bigger mirror. So mirrors are really good for multiplying and activating energy. Mirrors are always going to expand what it sees in the, like in the reflection. Okay. So wherever you have a mirror, you want to see what's in front of it. And right in front of my entryway, I have my little home office situated. And I know I had been needing a really big mirror to put in my front entryway so it could reflect all the business that I do, all the business that I've been doing lately. It can reflect everything coming in the front door, all the fresh energy. And I just, I really wanted to put a mirror there and a really big mirror to really expand on, 
you know, growing my business, growing opportunities, new energy and all and new opportunities, all that kind of stuff, right? So feng shui thing. And I have been searching for mirrors far and wide everywhere. I've looked up maybe to put like four different mirrors to fill up the space because the space, my entryway wall is actually really big. And it's just been hard for me to find the right mirror. It's really kind of been a, a process for me. So <clears throat> I don't know what came over me, but in the past couple of weeks, I've really been like going through some personal things and really having to remember when it comes to manifestation, one of the most important things we can do is learn to let go, is learn to surrender. But when something isn't coming or when something kind of feels frustrating, it's really hard to let go of control, right? And here's what happens. Fear, whenever you have a fear that you're not going to find something or that something for you, you're not going to have it, you sort of get into this this anxious state of like, when is it going to come for me? When is it going to happen? When am I going to find it? I'm so frustrating. It's not happening for me. You know, all these different kind of feelings come over you. But when you've got fear around anything, you know, whether it be lack or like it's never going to happen for me or just any of those feelings that comes from fear, fear attracts more of it. Fearlessness will remove it from your life. So when you have, this is something I want you to remember, when you have the feeling of like, it's never going to come for me, I'm never going to find it, it's never going to happen for me, that is out of fear. That's a fear thought. You can, you just equate, if you just equate fear with like evil, okay? Fear is bad. Fearlessness is good. So when you find yourself in situations and you're like, oh, it's never going to happen for me. And you immediately change your thought patterns. Something that I have studied for the last two years is neuro-linguistic programming. I got my coaching certificate to be a master NLP life coach, Okay. There's a lot of work that goes into it and you learn a lot about how we program our mind subconsciously. Now there's a book I really like and that I recommend you to read called The Game of Life and How to Play It. It's a really small book. It is, you could probably download it for free to be honest. It's a really cheap book and it's an easy read, but I highly recommend getting it and carrying it around with you everywhere because I think, I mean, I, I read it like a year ago and I read it often kind of in life when I need to pick me up. And so I read it recently and it reminded me of so much of this, that our fear, our fear thoughts will only attract those things happening for us. It's like we have that self-fulfilling prophecy. It's our rational mind. Our rational mind is full of insecurity, doubt, fear, and will constantly come up with fearful ideas because that's our brain's purpose. It's always looking. It's like scanning for threats, scanning for failure and for, you know, fearful things to happen to us, right? Negative experiences, okay? It's there to protect us. But when you can use what she calls your super conscious mind, okay? In the book, they talk about three different levels of the mind. The subconscious mind, which is basically like your programmable mind. It's like your, your servant. Okay. It just literally creates scenarios and what your deep beliefs are. Then you have your rational mind, which is what you're creating thought with the thoughts that you're thinking all day, all the time. And then you have your super conscious mind and your super conscious mind is like your divine mind. It's the crown chakra. It's that part of you that is connected to the divine. It's like your higher self mind. Okay. And we we're basically operating from these three different minds. So our rational mind will repeat the fearful thoughts when you're spinning on something and spiraling. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. What if this happens? What if that happens? What if I never find it? What if blah, blah, blah. That's just programming your subconscious mind. Then your subconscious mind goes, okay, it's never going to happen. That fear, let me repeat the fear, 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 and program it in that mind. However, if you can refrain from allowing your rational mind to program your subconscious mind, and instead you pull that fear back, you pull that thought back, and you cast it upon the superconscious mind. Even in the Bible, and she talks about this in the book, 
I think there's a verse that's like, cast your fears upon the Lord, right? Cast your fears upon God. God wants to carry the heavy burden of those fearful thoughts, okay? So you can say something like this. I put this situation in the hands of divine love and wisdom. If it is in the divine plan for me, I bless it and I no longer resist it. But if it's not divinely planned for me, I give thanks that it is now dissolved and dissipated. Okay? This is basically saying whatever my worry is, whatever I think I'm not going to get or whatever fear I've got going on, whatever I'm afraid of, I'm going to cast it upon the divine. I'm going to say if this is divinely meant for me, right? If this is a true desire of my heart and this is divinely meant for me, I bless it. I cast it. I let it go. I'm not going to worry about it anymore. I'm not going to allow my rational mind to sit there and program my subconscious mind with all these fearful thoughts all day. I'm dropping it and I'm giving it to God. Okay. And once you no longer resist it, there's that sense of fearlessness in you. You're not afraid of it anymore. When you're not afraid of it anymore, it's almost like that whole thing is just removed from your life. And in the book, it's so good because there's so many different stories where she illustrates these things. So for me, I've been on this hunt for this, for a mirror like this. And I woke up this morning, really early in the morning, and I had this nudge. And if you listen to my last episode, I talk about strengthening your intuition. Once you cast your worry upon God, the divine, whatever, like the right mirror is going to come to me when it comes to me. I will find the perfect mirror when the timing is right. That's what I said. That's what I gave it. And I just let it go. I didn't worry about it. I didn't search for hours online for mirrors like I had been before. I just kind of like I visualized what I wanted and I let it go. So this morning, it was like three something a.m., which is always like that witching hour for me where I know like it's a it's a nudge. It's an intuitive nudge when it happens between like the hours of three and four. And my stomach was hurting and I like woke up. And I had this thought, like this vision, I had this feeling like you should go to this particular store and go look for mirrors. And I like looked to see when the store opened, if I could go after I dropped Roman off at school, it's actually not far from Roman school. And I went to go check it out. And sure enough, there stood the absolute perfect mirror for me. I had been wanting a mirror in my entryway, which like I said, it's this huge wall. I needed a really big mirror. I wanted something with like a little bit of like a French twist, like modern French. And I just wanted it to feel soft and angelic. And it so feels that way. It's so beautiful. It's white on my white wall. It just looks gorgeous. It fills the space. It literally was on sale for like dirt cheap for a mirror. I just was like, I can't believe I found this mirror. Like it was so divinely planned and divinely meant to be. It was just one of those stories of manifestation that you hear about all the time, that I experience about all the time, or experience all the time. When I listen to my intuition, this is why your intuition is so important on your manifestation journey and your life in being in your feminine energy in being able to receive what is divinely meant for you when you're out of that and you're in that fear and you're in that control and you're in that worry that like harsh like wounded and energy you're trying to control everything you're exhausted and you're spinning and things it feels like everything happens only by force but that's not how it's meant to be so you have to learn how to stand still You have to sit in faith and know that God, that the divine is your supply, that everything you need, everything you want is meant for you. It's coming for you. The right thing will come at the right time. And you have to continuously, continuously again and again and again, cast the burden. There's a little part in the book where she says that Man violates law if he carries his own burdens and does it on his own. You are deviating from divine order, from divine spiritual law. If you try to carry your own fears and do it all yourself. When you cast your burden, it is immediately dissolved into nothingness. It is dissolved into light. 
So you can have your fear. And when you kind of cast it and you surrender it and you decide, when you cast it, that means you stop thinking about it. You stop worrying about it. So every time those fearful thoughts come in, you're like, nope, erased. I'm giving that to God. Like you just get it out of your mind. And then you can affirm to yourself, I cast this burden on the divine within and I go free to be X, Y, and Z. So let's say, you know, like, let's say you've got some money and you need money and you're like, I cast this burden of paying this bill on time to God. I get to go free and know that abundance is my birthright and it is coming to me. And you let it go. You do not use your brain. You do not use your rational mind to think about that thing or to, or to describe or talk about a fear. In the Bible, it also says our words are so important. Our word is like our magic wand. And every time we speak negatively about a situation or we think fearfully about a situation, we are just creating more of that situation. We're, we're keeping that situation alive. So you have to discipline yourself to not think or speak about that situation in a negative light. And every single time you find yourself, you find, because your mind's going to go there. Your, the reasoning mind is filled with limiting beliefs, doubts, and fears. It's always going to be looking for that. So anytime that comes up in your mind, that comes up against you, you just immediately cast it upon the divine. Give it to the divine. Just speak it out and just be like, no, 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 that is not it. That is not what I'm putting out there, okay? So it's really important to understand that just before we are meant to receive our manifestation, things seem a little difficult or dark. It's that thing, and she talks about this in the book, darkness before the dawn. Before the big hap, the thing, before the big like manifestation comes or occurs, sometimes it feels like everything seems to go wrong. That's why they talk about having faith until the end. Like you have to have faith even when, like at the final hour in that final minute, minute, even when it seems like nothing, like it's impossible that it will happen for you. Like there is just no way. You have to do it in that moment. You have to have that fear and that faith in that moment. And you have to immediately, okay, just before that deep depression kind of comes to cloud your consciousness, you immediately, you realize in that moment, like, okay, something's happening. When you get really scared or fears seem to really pile up, you're like, okay, something's happening here. Something's happening here. In this moment, I'm going to step up my faith. In this moment, I am going to go, I cast this burden on the divine and I am free to move forward. I am freeing this up from me. Okay. In that moment, a big shift happens. When you have that like faith, that small as a mustard seed faith, you've got that faith. You let it go. You surrendered it is typically when that thing comes in. So just remember that. You are the creator. You are the powerful force here. You are the one in control of how your life plays out. So anytime you realize you're scared or you're worried like something bigger is happening and you have no control of it, that's not true. In that moment, you remind yourself who you are. There is no separation in you from the divine. You cannot be separated from that. It is within you. So just hold on to that faith. Cast the burden on the divine. Extricate all of those fearful thoughts. You talking about something fearfully. You gossiping with your friends about all the things that are going wrong. Complaining like all these things that you just like, we stop it. We suck it up and we go, nope, I'm casting this worry and I am going to focus on faith. I'm going to focus on love. I'm going to focus on being happy, being joyful, connecting with my intuition, my higher self, asking your intuition, where should I go today? What should I work on? What should I do? What should I focus on? Lead me. And you can choose to focus on the things that light you up. Choose to focus on what what gives you joy in the moment. Like to me this morning, it was finding this mirror. 
right? And then reading the book, The Game of Life and How to Play It, it helped me so much just remember how this whole thing works because we sometimes can tend to forget, right? can be a little difficult. So with that, I hope this episode was really helpful for you because I'm telling you it was helpful for me. And I just was so excited to share the story of my mirror. And I just feel like it was my like manifested mirror that finally came to me and I finally got to receive her. And it was just a reminder. This is really how it works, you guys. We get to lean back and receive everything we really want when we let it go. When we have that faith, it's like that magic potion. Okay. So I hope you're feeling inspired and I hope that you share this episode with a friend who really might need a little pick me up too, because we all sometimes could use just like a recentering, refresh, and refocus. Don't forget to come join the Manifest Bliss membership inside the House of Bliss. We've got a call next week. There's some really exciting things. We're going to be talking about the birth chart soon. Don't miss the Lucky Girl sale on all of my ebooks. There's a lot of fun manifesting ebooks in there, especially using feng shui. And my jewelry, my crystal jewelry sale is happening right now too. It's a really big month around here for me and it's very exciting. Thank you for your love and support. Thank you guys for reaching out and let me know when these episodes really inspire you. I love you so, so, so much. Until next time, go manifest it all. Bye.